Are you enjoying V-Rising? Or perhaps looking for some tips before getting started? Well, grab some SPF 5000. Today we are covering some how-tos and must-knows to get you on your way to Vampire Overlord. Ready for some quick-fire tips? When you're in the wolf form, after killing the alpha wolf, other wolves and bears won't attack you. Stone golems can be found throughout the map and can assist you in getting some easy and early materials. Just don't get too close. This does also work on trees as well. When looking at your map, you'll notice some yellow highlighted areas. If you hover over this, it will display what resources can be found here. Very easy to miss, but invaluable to know. When reviving a down teammate, be careful. Timing is everything, as once you begin to revive, you can't stop. And bosses have a tendency to target you if you are close by. This will deplete half of your current blood pool, and also give the down vampire your blood type and quality. Nice! When out in the world, as well as killing mobs, you'll want to be on the lookout for containers, barrels, crates, and chests. All of which have a chance to drop loot or other valuable materials, such as recipes for better gear. On the topic of loot, you will come across some silver coins. Be careful though, as they will damage you while in your inventory and will do more damage based on how many you have. Getting around at first can be slow, but why walk all the way back down the path when you can descend from ledges with the shift key? You will have access to a range of different weapons throughout your journey, all of which have bonuses and buffs which can be found in their description. For example, maces have a damage buff to rocks and minerals. You can also find recipes in the world that will allow you to craft merciless versions of other weapons, except with a higher gear level. Horses are a great way to get around. They can be found in Dunley farmlands at highlighted spots and just need to be mounted to be claimed. They will need to be fed water by pressing tab next to your horse so that it doesn't die. If you are playing on a PvP server, other players can claim and steal your horse very easily, so keep them locked away. I have an amazing tip for you next, but before I do, if you are interested in catching me live, I do stream on Twitch, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, at 1 o'clock UK time. Come by and say hello. One of the best tips in this guide, compulsively count auto storage. Once you have a few chests set up with most of the unique items you will be collecting, you can quickly dump your inventory as seen on screen. You want to keep your mouse on the button and move along and double click F to interact with the next chest. Done, clean inventory. Garlic will start becoming a problem as you move into the Dunley farmlands. Certain highlighted areas will be full of garlic barriers and you will receive a debuff that will continue to stack. This reduces your damage and increases damage received, so don't be there too long. This effect will persist through death and also takes a long time to wear off. Around the map you will find ruins of what looks to be previous vampire bases. These are ideal base locations, so have a look around and see if this suits your vampire needs. Pretty early into the journal quests, which are located in the top left of the screen, you will build the Blood Altar, which is your key to locating bosses and unlocking new recipes, structures, and abilities. You go, vampire! Before getting into the game, there are a couple of settings which are worth bringing to your attention. One of them is Auto Run, which makes long-distance travel more manageable. Also something that I prefer is having a mini-map that rotates with your character. This can be done in the settings and also on the UI in the game next to the minimap. Once you have made copper tools, you will notice you have an ability to use. This isn't only good for combat, but can be used for harvesting as well. Give it a try. Don't forget this can also be used on trees as well. Seeds are potentially one of the most underrated items you will receive early on in the game. These can be planted within your base and will infinitely give you a harvest point for that type of plant. This is available for all types of flowers, 
cotton and even trees. Tristan the Vampire Hunter is certainly a force to be reckoned with. However, if you don't suck at the game, you will be rewarded. It will give you an alternative recipe for greater blood essence and important crafting material. Using 200 blood essence instead of 4 unsullied hearts. Blood types can be super important and can influence your attack style based on your blood quality. For example, the worker blood type actually gives you some crazy buffs for resource gathering. I wish I knew this before building my vampire empire. Did you know you can teleport using a horse? Faster vampire, faster! Each named territory on the map indicates different level mobs, so be careful moving north. Once you have the bear form, it is extremely effective at resource gathering. Using the Q ability, then using your appropriate tool to finish the node, makes things much quicker. If you receive some tools or armor that you're not going to use, save them in a chest. Eventually, you have servants that will need some items too. And the same with any gems as well. You will need these for upgrading at some point. Gear score doesn't only give you better stats, but it also drastically reduces the damage you receive against enemies. So always wear your best stuff. And that's everything for part one. If you have enjoyed and would like to see part two, please consider liking and subscribing for more. If you have any tips of your own, leave a comment down below. I would love to see what you have to say. That's all for me. I've been Chongish. Take care and all the best.